So today I have kind of a fun project I completed recently. It's a magic eye, what some people call them, or a cat's eye, or actually it's a 6E2 tube indicator. Uh, this is a low voltage tube setup that uh, was used traditionally for, well, in place of a VU meter back, I guess it came out around the 30s or so, 1930s, and maybe uh, was used a lot for signal strength indicators and stuff. And so I know when I was a kid growing up in the 60s and 70s, you saw these tubes being used as volume indicators or VU meter on things like tape recorders. I remember my grandparents had a TV set that had one of these to show signal strength when you're tuning in the channel. So I kind of grew up around these and they're kind of unusual to see, but they're fun to watch. I took some shots off the uh, web page to make myself a little a little book here that <laughs> has all the information in it so I could just track it in a little book here. Anyway, so uh, I think it was about $20 or $30. I can't remember. There was two forms of this. One was all the components already installed on the boards because all you're going to get is the tubes, the sockets, the controller board, and then the, uh, I'll call it the power, power board. I don't know if it's an inverter or what you would call it, but uh, it, it changes the your 12 volts up to like 230 volts or something ridiculous. So basically it's a real simple kit. You're basically going to be mounting the tubes to something and then mounting your boards to something and then you can display it however you want. So I thought what I'd do is put them in a, in a shadow box and I got this at Michael's, which is a hobby shop here in the United States. And so what I did was got this shadow box, which is this part. And so I mounted the control board back here. Now, one thing to watch out is once this is plugged in and powered up, you do have high voltages going through it. So ideally, if this was anywhere really accessible by any, especially by any kids or anything, you want to keep this covered or just out of the way of getting grabbed when you're, when you're handling this. You get the tubes, obviously, the sockets, and this is a DC to DC, what do they call it, a booster board, and it takes 12 volts DC up to 250 volts DC, and you can adjust that. That'll adjust the power and how high the, uh, the little markings go and everything. And it's always hard to take video of lights in that, like in this case. So these tubes, um, that's I had to turn the exposure thing down on my camera so you could actually see it. Uh, but these, obviously, as you saw at the intro, these little bars go in and out. And you can adjust in how far they go, uh, like where, where they peak and everything, and also how much is showing. So you have two adjustments for each tube. This is actually stereo, so you've got a right and left channel. I'm running it actually as mono because I had a problem getting a good source to, to power these. And plus, if you're dealing with different sources of music or sound, you'll get different input levels. So what I've done is I've hooked it up to a, and so on my mixer, I've actually hooked the output up from my send channel to this. It's a mono signal coming out of this. So I had to go a mono to stereo adapter back here. But then what I've done is that allows me to adjust the gain level, the output level to that send auxiliary send. Uh, and that's what actually powers sends the signal to the to the tubes. The reason I like this, I don't like the fact that it's not stereo because that's kind of defeats some of its purpose, but it's really handy because I've got the the gain knob on here for that send. Uh, so depending on what I'm listening to, it might be real quiet or something, and maybe I don't want to listen to it loud, so I can boost the gain on the tubes to give me more signal, or I can, if it's too loud of a signal, like say if I'm see if I'm recording a guitar or something, or whatever I happen to be doing, and I want to turn it down, I can turn it down as well. So and if I don't even want to see anything, I can just turn that all the way down so I don't have any signal going at all. If you're hooking this up to a stereo, I actually tried to hook this up to headphones, and they have headphones out on this thing as well. The problem with this was the headphones don't really work until you put the volume up. So that kind of defeats, I think, defeats the purpose of having a headphone because you've already got your volume up and then you put a pair of headphones on. On a stereo system, when you plug your headphones in, many times your main signal will get cut off and everything will come through your headphones for private listening. So if you're hooking this up to a stereo, like a home stereo, it might work great. But in this case, with this particular mixer, and I've been kind of seeing this on a lot of mixers apparently, that the headphone out is more for like monitoring your signal, which makes sense because it really is sort of a monitor send. But unless you've got signal going out, your headphones don't get any signal. So that's just something here and there, but something to watch out for if you're going to play with this. Okay, well, uh, I printed this little booklet off the website just so I had all the pictures and everything I needed to complete this little kit. Uh, but this is what comes in the kit. You get your controller board. This is your DC to DC booster. You get the two C 6E2 tubes and two sockets, and everything's color-coded. Uh, the boards have plenty of indications as far as what 
what they do. So as far as what pin numbers, for example, on the on the little connectors here, uh, it appears the same way. You know what your grounds are. You've got your inputs for your uh, right and left channels, or however you got that hooked up with one or the other. Uh, you got your power going into the middle. Okay, that comes from the power board. And the power board is simply an input of 12 volts and an output of 250 volts DC. So the information they give you is a little sparse, but uh, it is enough to kind of get some background as far as what's going on. Again, this is just from the website. Uh, just some pictures. I thought I'd get a little book so I know what was going on. Uh, they give you the pin connectors for each socket. The connections, you can do it two ways. You can do a 6.3 6 volt or a 12 volt, and that's the, that's the power that goes to your heater. Uh, depending on how you have it hooked up, you'll do it one or the other, depending on what your power supplies. I think most people are probably going to have 12 volt, but again, that depends on what you have available to you. Again, the directions have plenty of information as far as what goes to what. It gets a little confusing, and especially if you're going to start trimming wires and everything, uh, I went ahead and made sure I just copied out that the number one pin is yellow, number two is not connected, number three is orange, etc. Uh, so do that for each side. The colors on your board or on your sockets, you can read the pinouts on them so you get so you know one through nine. But what might happen is the wires will probably be consistent, but maybe not consistent with the directions as far as the wire color. So I would advise you go through and identify that in my case, one was yellow, three was orange, etc. And the website does give you a little bit more information. Uh, they even provide a schematic of the actual circuitry if you're into that. So this is a fun little project if you're into doing those little minor electronic projects like this. It takes a few days. I had to order a few parts over time with the right input sockets and stuff like that. But uh, pretty much it's all self-contained and, and a little bit of self-wiring. I did have to solder the power jack so I could plug in with a DC converter on that. And I did have to solder in my stereo input connector as well. So a little bit of soldering. If that's a problem, obviously you might want to consider if you have those skills or not, but otherwise it's really a simple kit for, if you know how to solder, obviously it's, it's not that big of a deal. A little bit of woodworking involved. I happen to have just some spare parts sitting around like for the legs and everything. Uh, so that's just, you can, I see people, a lot of people put these on plexiglass, which makes kind of a nice presentation as well. Um, I kind of like the idea of <clears throat> being more enclosed looking uh, and getting framed. I like the black frame the way this has turned out. So So that's it. So if you really like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you really like it, please subscribe. Yay! And if you would like to help support this channel and do a one-time donation, I have a link in the description. If you want to donate a dollar or two or ten dollars or whatever you think it is, if you found this interesting or if you learned something, uh, I don't monetize my videos, so every little bit helps and goes toward maintaining and buying new equipment for my videos uh, and probably buying some kits down the road. So thank you very much for watching.